California is about to spend $2 billion boring a tunnel through a mountain that's been trying to swallow a highway for over a century. The stretch of road is called Last Chance Grade, and for the 28,000 residents of Del Norte County in far northern California, this isn't just a highway, but their only practical connection to the rest of the state. Highway 101, also known as the Redwood Highway, runs along California's northern coast through some of the most spectacular scenery in America. About 10 miles south of Crescent City, though, the road clings to steep forested cliffs almost a thousand feet above the Pacific Ocean, and that three-mile section has been crumbling toward the sea for more than a hundred years. The geology here fights everything engineers have attempted. Four active landslide complexes sit within the project boundaries, and the ground beneath the highway contains what geologists call an earth flow zone, which is essentially an underground landslide that shifts approximately two inches every single year. Fresh pavement normally lasts seven to 10 years on a standard highway. At last chance grade, cracks appear within six months. 40 feet horizontally and 30 feet vertically is how far portions of this road have shifted since the 1930s. Charlie Narwald, a senior engineering geologist with Caltrans, put it simply when he said they've just been clinging to this hillside for over a century, trying to maintain a road. That maintenance hasn't come cheap. More than $125 million has gone into keeping this stretch of highway open since 1995, with nearly $100 million spent since 2015 alone. Nature, as the engineers like to say, has consistently pushed back. The human cost of this unstable ground stretches back decades. March of 1972 saw Edwin and Ailey Stremberg die when the road washed out beneath them. During what locals now call the Valentine's Day slide of February 2021, 40,000 cubic yards of debris closed the highway completely, and a Caltrans engineer lost his foot when a tree toppled onto him during rescue operations. That 2021 slide was dramatic, but hardly unusual. Landslides strike one to three times per decade here, and the frequency has been accelerating in recent years. Between July 2012 and February 2013 alone, engineers recorded more than 200 slides. A major landslide in 2014 reduced the highway to a single lane, and it stayed that way for nine years until October 2023. What happens when the road closes? About 6,000 vehicles travel this route every day, and there is no reasonable detour. The emergency alternative is a 27-mile-old logging road requiring a four-wheel drive vehicle over two and a half hours one way and it may be impassable in winter. The standard detour when the highway is fully blocked means driving through Oregon, which converts a 30-minute trip into an 8-hour, 449-mile journey. Brandon Johnson, a driver and supervisor at Del Norte Ambulance, described what closures mean for his crews, saying they'd shut down their lights and sirens and have to wait with the rest of traffic. His colleague, paramedic Mariah Aguilera, explained that if someone's bleeding uncontrollably and they don't arrive soon enough, the patient starts going into shock. The economic numbers paint an equally grim picture. $650,000 per day is what a full closure costs in travel costs alone. A one-year closure would reduce county economic output by $450 million and eliminate 3,800 jobs. Blake Alexander, who owns a dairy farm in Crescent City, and sends 55 milk trucks through last chance grade every week, faces an extra $1,500 to $1,800 per truck trip whenever the Oregon detour becomes necessary, costing his operation $150,000 per month. Caltrans spent decades fighting the geology directly. They built retaining walls, installed drainage systems, and reinforced slopes with soil nails and cable nets. After storms, construction engineer Clayton Malmberg says it's a war zone out there. The engineering challenges border on the extraordinary. The site sits directly above the Cascadia subduction zone, the most seismically active region in the contiguous United States, capable of generating earthquakes of magnitude 7.5 or higher. The rock itself is what geologists call broken formation, which means highly fractured sandstone with little natural cohesion that can fail without warning. The retaining walls engineers built here aren't like normal retaining walls because there are multiple nested slides within larger slide complexes, all moving independently. 
Malmberg explained they had to build expandable sections so that as the walls move independent of each other, they don't break each other apart. And that's when the real problem became clear. All of this work, all of this money, had only been buying time. 2018 brought an expert-based risk assessment from Caltrans and the Federal Highway Administration, using three-dimensional technology and holographic models to analyze the site. The conclusion couldn't be ignored, and continuing to patch and repair would never provide a permanent solution. The only way to truly fix last chance grade was to bypass it entirely. The project that emerged from more than a decade of study is audacious by any measure. California will bore a 6,000-foot tunnel just over a mile long straight through the mountain. This will become the longest highway tunnel in Caltrans history, surpassing the Wawana Tunnel in Yosemite, which was built in 1933 at 4,233 feet. The tunnel enters south of the most unstable slope and exits to the north, completely avoiding the geologically active section. A single-bore, two-way design with a life expectancy of 75 years. Sequential excavation is the method they'll use, also known as the New Austrian Tunneling Method, and developed in Austria in the 1950s and 60s. Workers excavate just three to six feet at a time with continuous monitoring instead of blasting through in large sections. Engineers evaluate rock fractures after each advance to determine support needs, stabilizing the tunnel with rock bolts and fiber-reinforced shotcrete as they go, then installing waterproof membranes and a final lining of reinforced concrete designed to withstand ground loads, water pressure, and seismic activity. The same approach proved successful on the Tom Lantos Tunnels at Devil's Slide, south of San Francisco, which opened in 2013. HNTB Corporation designed that project and is now leading the last chance grade work. Those tunnels solved a remarkably similar problem, bypassing an unstable coastal stretch of Highway 1 that had plagued drivers for decades. $2.1 billion in 2031 dollars is the official cost estimate for the last chance grade tunnel. With uncertainties factored in, the range could reach anywhere from $1.75 billion to $3.25 billion. For perspective, California has already spent over $125 million just maintaining the existing road since 1995, and that spending was projected to escalate from around $3.5 million annually to $45 million by 2034 if they kept patching instead of building the tunnel. Getting to this point took more than a decade of planning and an unusual level of cooperation among groups that often find themselves at odds. Congressman Jared Huffman convened a stakeholder group in 2014 that included tribal representatives, environmental organizations, business interests, and government agencies. The Yurok Tribe, the largest federally recognized tribe in California, with approximately 5,000 members, participated alongside the Tolowadini Nation, Elk Valley Rancheria, and other tribal groups who have inhabited the region for over 10,000 years. Environmental groups faced a genuine dilemma with this project. 144 trees will be removed, including about 12 redwoods with trunks more than 5 feet in diameter, and some of these trees measure up to 8 and 9 tenths feet across. Only about 5% of California's original old-growth redwoods still survive, and this project runs through a UNESCO World Heritage Site and International Biosphere Reserve. Both Save the Redwoods League and the Environmental Protection Information Center ultimately supported the tunnel decision. And here's why. Caltrans originally identified 16 potential solutions. Some would have gone through even more old-growth forest. Longer bypass options covering 15 to 20 miles were eliminated because of their enormous environmental footprint. An alternative called X would have stayed closer to the existing roadway, retreating inland by about 130 feet and building a 1.6-mile tiered retaining wall system at a cost of only $880 million. Construction would have taken three to five years instead of six to eight. The risk assessment found that Alternative X had a high risk of experiencing some form of road closure within 50 years. Only the tunnel was assessed as having low risk. Steve Meats, president and CEO of Save the Redwoods League, acknowledged his organization was deeply saddened by the loss of ancient redwood forest, while also stating the alternatives were among the least environmentally harmful solutions available. No environmental litigation has been threatened or filed. Supervisor Chris Howard called that consensus supercritical for this community, 
to avoid getting hung up on environmental litigation for years. The funding challenge remains immense. As of June 2025, California has secured $40 million for the first year of design work, with another $185 million projected for 2026 to complete the design phase. Approximately $2 billion is still needed for actual construction. Congressman Huffman rejected proposals to fund the tunnel through tolls. After calculating that at $1 per vehicle for 6,000 daily vehicles, it would take 959 years to cover the costs. Rural poverty in Humboldt and Del Norte counties made tolls unfair in his view. County officials are hoping the federal government will step in, similar to how federal emergency relief largely paid for the Tom Lantos tunnels. Huffman is pursuing federal mega-grant programs, and the county has hired a Washington lobbying firm to advocate for funding. The timeline, assuming funding comes through, shows construction starting around October 2030, with ground-disturbing activities beginning in spring 2031. The tunnel would open sometime around 2038 or 2039, roughly 14 years from now. And all the while, the mountain keeps moving. Workers are currently drilling along the proposed tunnel alignment, taking rock samples to inform the final design. The existing road is passable, but challenging, with those undulations the engineers call whoop de doos appearing despite recent paving. The earth flow continues its two-inch annual creep toward the ocean. Leanna Winkler Prince, the Caltrans project manager, summarized what's at stake when she explained that the steep terrain combined with heavy rainfall, seismic activity, and the dynamic geology of the Cascadia subduction zone means that even the most advanced engineering solutions have only bought time, not permanence. During the nine years when the highway was reduced to a single lane, stories emerged of how the community adapted. The blood bank would drive to either side of a slide, and someone would literally get out with a box and walk it across to be handed over on the other side. As Winkler Prince noted, you can't even call it a detour at some point because it's just not realistic anymore. The tunnel represents California's best and possibly only chance to permanently solve a problem that has defied engineers for over a century. Boring through a mountain that refuses to stay still, bypassing slopes that have already shifted 40 feet, and finally giving Del Norte County what supervisor Chris Howard describes as their obligation, a safe route to stay connected to the state of California. The original road through Last Chance Grade was completed in 1937, the same year as the Golden Gate Bridge. Engineers at the time noted it would be expensive to maintain because of the extremely unstable formation. Nearly 90 years later, that prediction stands vindicated. California has finally decided that fighting the mountain is a battle they cannot win, and the only solution is to go through it. If you found this story as fascinating as we did putting it together, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next deep dive into the engineering projects shaping our world.